Welcome back guys, The Explanation Pro is here. Today, I'll explain the thriller drama film titled Good Doctor. Spoilers incoming. The film opens with a doctor waking up his fellow doctor, Dr. Martin. After a brief talk about how the doctor is able to wake up early, Dr. Martin proceeds to his patient. The patient speaks Spanish, so he must find other means to communicate with him, such as acting the words. In the next scene, the doctors have a meeting about a patient's possible disease. Dr. Whelan tells Dr. Martin that the patient is already divorced, and Dr. Martin responds that he does not know about this. Soon after, Dr. Martin approaches Dr. Whelan in the hospital hall to ask how to apply to the Infectious Disease Fellowship. Dr. Willenson tells him that it is too early for Dr. Martin to apply, but he can eventually apply if he is a good doctor. Dr. Willens adds that to be a good doctor, one must act like one. After being asked by a nurse, Theresa, if what he had written is penicillin, Dr. Martin heads down to a room to draw blood from one of the patients, Dayan. However, he looks amateurish in doing this that even the mother of the patient notices. In the next scene, Dr. Martin goes home to find a package. He sees a note from his mother about how proud she is of what he is doing. After taking out the frame with diplomas inside, Martin writes a letter thanking his mother. That night, Martin heads to a party. There, a woman mistakes him for someone else, and that someone else is Martin's fellow doctor. While they are talking, Martin looks as if he feels some kind of contempt. The scene quickly jumps to Martin back in the house. The house is noticeably minimal, with only a few objects present, such as the chair and table against a white backdrop. Another noticeable thing is that he is all alone in that minimal space. In the following scene, Dr. Martin enters Dayan's room to check on her. Dayan asks what kind of disease she has, and when Dr. Martin tells her the disease's complicated name, Dayan then miswrites it in her journal. After briefly interacting with her, Dayan's family enters the room, including her boyfriend. After that, Dr. Martin leaves the room, but he is confronted by Teresa, who asks him again if he had written penicillin after telling her yes. The nurse then takes him back to his earlier patient, who now has red blots around his body. It turns out that the patient is actually allergic to penicillin, which means that Teresa must file an incident report as a procedure. Afterwards, during the break, Dr. Martin approaches Dr. Whalens again, asking him if the incident report can affect his application to the Infectious Disease Fellowship. Dr. Whalens then replies that he cannot undo it. The following day, Dr. Martin checks on Diane again, who is fighting with her boyfriend over the phone. After dropping the call, Diane asks Dr. Martin if she should break up with her boyfriend, and Dr. Martin replies that she should. They then seem to flirt around something which Teresa awkwardly sees. After Teresa tells him that she cannot follow orders if Dr. Martin is not writing properly, Dr. Martin is noticeably embarrassed and leaves Dayan. In the elevator, another nurse notices that something is bugging Dr. Martin. After Dr. Martin cryptically tells him that nurse should follow doctors, he asks the nurse how long Teresa has been in the hospital. The nurse jokingly replies that what Dr. Martin should do is to put something in Teresa's drink that will cause her heart attack. But the nurse recants what he said after he notices that the doctor might have considered it. That night, Dr. Martin returns to Dayan's room to find that her boyfriend gave her an apology gift. Dayan wakes up to see the doctor beside the bed. She then unknowingly reinforces Dr. Martin's belief about how nurses should follow doctors. Afterwards, she asks Dr. Martin if she is cured and that she will tell the nurse that Dr. Martin is a good doctor. The scene then jumps to the following day. Dr. Whalens clears Dayan because she is now cured, but Dr. Martin insists for one more day to be sure. However, his request is denied. Because of this, Dr. Martin heads to Dayan's room, but he finds it empty. Just then, Dayan's father enters the scene, telling Dr. Martin that he is inviting him for a Friday night dinner at their house because Dayan likes him for being a good doctor. Dr. Martin accepts the invitation. In the next scene, Martin prepares for dinner by dressing up in suits and practicing his greeting in the mirror. That night, holding a bottle of wine, Martin enters the Nixon household, only to find that Dayan is not there. Dayan's mother explains that while she has insisted on her daughter staying, Dayan is talking with her boyfriend instead. Martin is noticeably disappointed with this information. At the dinner table, Martin sees the Nixon siblings arguing. After this, Martin requests to go to the bathroom. He looks at the mirror as if to say that he hates his situation. He also sees Dayan's medicine in the medicine cabinet. After getting out of the bathroom, he sees Dayan's room and enters it without any second thoughts. After checking one of her pictures, Martin leaves the house immediately, excusing himself from the family by claiming that something came up in the hospital. After getting home, it is shown that Martin actually took Dayan's pictures off the frame, placing the picture in the frame of his family picture instead. At this point, we can see that Martin is somehow developing an obsession with Dayan, as even while lying down in bed, he looks at her picture. In the next scene, after the convening of the usual doctor's meeting, Dr. Martin is stopped by Dr. Whelans asking him if something is up. He then asks Dr. Martin why he wanted to be a doctor in the first place, and Dr. Martin answers that he wants to be respected and then help people. Dr. Martin then goes to spill his narcissistic view of things, saying that Teresa has been treating him like he's a nobody. 
In the next scene, Dr. Morton receives a call from Dayan's sister telling him that they are supposed to give him a gift basket but forgot. That night, Morton goes to the Nixon household telling Dayan's mother that he is in a hurry so that he is only there to receive the gift basket. He then asks again to use the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, Martin insidiously changes the content of Dayan's pills, replacing it with sugar instead. He then leaves with the gift basket. In the next scene, Dayan is back in the hospital. After telling the mother and daughter that he will run some tests, Dr. Martin leaves the room. However, he witnesses a group of doctors and nurses rushing to one of his patients' room. He then checks if something is wrong. After spotting something wrong, he directly heads to Dr. Whelan to tell him that his patient's disease is not his fault with the penicillin mishap from the previous days, accusing Teresa instead for administering a different medicine. That night, Dr. Morton heads to Dayan's room. After briefly talking to her, Dr. Morton goes to grab a different medicine bag sneakily. While Dayan is sleeping, Dr. Morton switches the bag's liquid content. While hurriedly going away, Dr. Morton crashes to a nurse. The nurse then tells him that she is actually the reason for the earlier faulty administering of the medicine. After this revelation, which seems insignificant to Dr. Morton, he heads to the bathroom to throw away the syringe he used earlier. The following day, Dr. Martin checks up on Dayan, but of course he already knows her condition. He tells Dayan that she has to stay for a few more days. After informing her, Dr. Martin sinisterly goes to where the bags are stored to repeat what he did yesterday. However, he hears and sees a nurse and a patient fooling around there, interrupting his plan. After getting the two to leave, he continues getting the bags. Inside Dayan's room, Dr. Martin almost got caught by Teresa, but fortunately for him and unfortunately for Dayan, Teresa lets him pass. Dr. Martin then heads to the laboratory to sabotage Dayan's resistant result, which will make her stay at the hospital for a long time. The following day, after the doctors have their usual meeting, Dr. Martin tells Dayan that her condition worsens. Dayan, fully trusting him, asks if he will operate on her if it ever comes to that point, but Dr. Martin tells her that he does not operate. Afterwards, Dr. Martin notices Dayan's boyfriend outside the room, carrying a heart-shaped balloon. He immediately tells Dayan's boyfriend that Dayan cannot take any visitors as of the moment. Dayan's boyfriend then gives Dr. Martin the balloon, asking him to give it to Dayan. After he leaves, Dr. Martin proceeds to another room while popping and throwing away the balloon. In the next scene, Dayan is writing in her journal despite her worsening condition, prompting Dr. Martin to tell her to rest. Dayan then confesses that she had intercourse with her boyfriend the night before her return to the hospital, which must be why she got sick. But of course this is not true. Dayan then asks the doctor if she will die but Dr. Morton reassures her that she will not die. The following day, the doctors are astonished by how complex Dayan's condition is. One of the veteran doctors tells Dr. Martin to get his file about the treatment he had left in his car. After getting in the car, Dr. Martin decides to stay there for a while. When he returned, they then conducted an operation on Dayan. After the operation, Dayan wakes up with Dr. Martin looking closely at her face. Dayan asks him if he has any girlfriend or wife, and Dr. Martin tells her that he does not have one. She then confesses that she always thought Dr. Martin liked her sister, and after Dr. Martin tells her no, she falls asleep. Dr. Martin, seeing this opportunity, kisses the unconscious Dayan. Dr. Martin then falls asleep in the hall, where a nurse wakes him up eventually. However, upon waking up, Dr. Martin sees that Dayan is not in her bed and that he receives a code 4, which indicates something drastic. He angrily confronts Teresa about Dayan's whereabouts. Dr. Martin runs to where Dayan currently is. When he reaches her room, the doctors and nurses are already trying their best to revive her. Dayan opens her eyes once more, but it would be for the final time as she eventually dies. Dr. Martin cannot help but feel teary-eyed but he still restrained himself by not showing that much emotion. But throughout the day, there is heaviness in his soul, carrying it until the night when he is lying on his bed alone, staring at the ceiling with eyes wide open. The following day, Teresa apologizes to Dr. Martin for what happened earlier. After this, she informs him that Dr. Whelans would like to see him. In the conference room, Dr. Whelans is there with a psychiatrist to evaluate Dr. Martin for his first time losing a patient. After the psychiatric evaluation, Dr. Martin is confronted by Dayan's father, accusing him of killing his daughter, an accusation too close to home. Teresa and Dr. Whelans step in to defend Dr. Martin, telling Dayan's father that Dr. Martin has been exemplary. Dayan's father is then escorted outside without a scuffle. The following day, a nurse approaches Dr. Martin, telling him to meet him later somewhere in the hospital. After arriving at the place, the nurse then blackmails Dr. Martin with Dayan's diary that details Dayan's fantasies about the doctor. With his reputation on the line, Dr. Martin has to do the nurse's bidding to prescribe an opioid for him. After doing this, Dr. Martin buys his medicine outside the hospital to paint the opioid a different, much more acceptable color. After giving it to the nurse, the nurse refuses to return the book, frustrating Dr. Martin. In the next scene, while at the party, a veteran doctor informs that Dr. Martin can apply for the fellowship but this does not make him happy because he still has a problem to handle. Because of this, Dr. Martin decides to poison the next set of opioids that he will give to the nurse. 
The next time they meet, Dr. Morton gives the nurse a faux opioid, but the nurse still refuses to give him the book. After taking the poison, Dr. Morton tries to remove himself from the place, but the nurse playfully follows him. With no other choice, Dr. Morton leads him to a room, hoping that he will die there without anyone seeing. But when the nurse starts to cough, he immediately realizes that it is poison. Dr. Morton tries to close the door forcefully, but the others begin to notice. So Dr. Martin smartly decides to fake it, making it look like that he just arrived and seen the nurse convulsing. The nurse dies without revealing the doctor's secret. After the nurse's death, Dr. Martin heads straight to the nurse's locker to finally get the Jan's journal. Because he was near the nurse on his death, Dr. Martin is briefly interrogated by a detective. Dr. Whalens tells Dr. Martin to take a break from doctoring for a while. He then goes home, where he falls asleep reading the journal. The following day, Martin wakes up from a knock at the door, the detective from yesterday. There, the detective asks more questions regarding the nurse, telling him that the medicine has been poisoned and that there is a possibility that the doctor might have given it to him. Martin tells the detective that he hardly knows the nurse, revealing that the nurse is a lewd person for fooling around with his patients. After making such comments, Martin sees Dayan's journal to which he excuses himself from the conversation. Inside the bathroom, Martin breathes heavily from the pressure. He then rips the pages of the journal, throwing it to the toilet in an attempt to get rid of it. But a toilet clogs and the detective has just called from outside, sending more pressure on Martin. Because of the clogging, Martin climbs to the window to escape. Fully convinced that he will get caught, Martin looks at the calm waves of the ocean, clearly contemplating a much permanent escape. He runs towards to the sea to drown himself, but it is all just his contemplation. In the end, he abandons this idea and returns to the bathroom. He wears a suit before going outside the bathroom, telling the detective that he is in a bit of a hurry. The detective has no more questions to ask him, and so he leaves. The film ends with Dr. Martin returning to his duty as a doctor as if nothing ever happened at all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.